Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for inviting me to our conference this morning on feminism. I'm delighted to be here to talk to you. I read the other day that the Saudi government has struck a blow for feminism. It has issued a decree granting women the right to know if their husbands have divorced them. Women will receive the information about the divorce from the courts by text message. I think we would all agree that when we talk about feminism, Saudi women have a very long road to travel still. However, a new area, era of feminism has recently begun. It's been empowered by the constant connectivity of the internet and the strength of the Me Too movement. And with it, a new wave of feminists are speaking out in record numbers against discrimination. This movement has been labelled the fourth wave of feminism. But I wondered, if this is the fourth wave, then what has been the first, second and third waves? So I'd like to start my speech by looking at a little bit, little bit of the history of feminism. The roots of feminism are actually probably buried in ancient Greece, but mostly in the West we recognise the movement as having begun in the 1830s to early 1900s. We now call this phase the first wave. The first wave of feminism was a period of activity and thought that occurred, as I say, during the 19th and early 20th centuries throughout the Western world. And here I am talking about the Western world. It's uh, possible that we could recognize some feminist activists and thinkers before this time, but they were somewhat few and far between. The first wave focused mostly on legal issues, primarily on gaining the right to vote. But the term first wave was only coined in 1968 when the second wave was recognized. It was coined by Martha Lear writing in the New York Times magazine. And she was the first one to use the term second wave feminism, just like we only recognize the first world war as the first world war. When we had the second world war, then we didn't recognize the first wave of feminism until we had the second wave if you take my meaning. So women in the late 19th and early 20th centuries realized that they must first gain political power, including the right to vote, in order to bring about change. I think you would agree with me that the women of Saudi Arabia, sadly, are still struggling in this first wave of feminism. The second wave, happened between the 1960s and the 1980s. And this was a time when it was called quite often women's liberation, or more pejoratively, women's lib. It came off the heels of the Second World War, and it focused on the workplace, on sexuality, family and reproductive rights, uh, and so on. It was perceived at that time that women had largely, in the Western world, already met their equality goals under the law. But this, and the seed had been planted in the first wave and that women had the potential to contribute just as much, if not more, than men. So the second wave focused more on kind of unofficial inequalities to distinguish it from the objectives of the earlier feminists who were concentrated on the legal side more. The time of the second wave is now often dismissed a little bit as rather offensive, rather outdated, obsessed with middle class white women's problems. But what's interesting and what I found interesting when I was researching this was to find that many women during the second wave of feminism were initially part of other civil rights movements, such as the black civil rights movement in the United States and the anti-Vietnam movement there also gay and lesbian movements of, in, in various places, and many other groups fighting for equality. And the women supporters of these civil rights movements felt that their voices were not being heard within these movements. And they felt, therefore, that in order to gain respect within the movements that they were working in, they needed first to ad address this gender equality uh, issue. 
they cared so much about these uh, civil movements and civil issues that they recognized they needed to strengthen their voices by fighting for gender equality within the movements they were struggling in, in order to be heard. When this second wave began in the 1960s, it, as I said, it was sometimes a little bit pejoratively called women's lib. Uh, in, in fact, the word feminist was almost, by some people, considered almost a dirty word. Feminist, feminist. Oh, this is a, a woman who hates men, who burns her bras and, and never shaves her legs. So the, the, F, the feminism was almost the F word, a dirty word. But this started to change with the third wave. The third wave came in the 1990s and early 2000s. And unlike the former movements, the term feminist now began to become officially accepted and um, better received. The fight continued during this wave to vanquish the disparities in male and female pay and the reproductive rights of women. The work continued also to end violence against women, but of course that is a struggle ongoing around all the world, I think you would agree. This wave, this third wave, was more about acceptance and a true understanding of the word feminism. Of course, a lot of progress has been made since the first wave, but there's still much to be done. There's a range of feminist issues uh, today, and it's kind of today much harder to put a label on what a feminist actually looks like, which brings me to the fourth wave. This fourth wave feminism represents the resurgence of interest in feminism that began around 2012, and it's associated very much with the use of social media, particularly Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, YouTube, Tumblr, uh, and the rest. According to the feminist scholar Prudence Chamberlain, the focus of the fourth wave is justice for women, particularly opposition to sexual harassment and violence. The fourth wave feminism is defined by technology. Fourth wave feminists focus on issues like street and workplace harassment, campus sexual violence, sexual assault, and rape culture. And a number of scandals have galvanized this movement, including the Delhi gang rape of 2012, the Jimmy Savile allegations of 2012, the Bill Cosby sexual assault cases of 2014, and Harvey Weinstein allegations in 2017, and all of this, of course, subsequently gave rise to the Me Too movement. I've said that the fourth wave is led by a new generation, rallying from equality and women's rights. But I have a question about this, and it's something that I asked myself when doing my research for this speech. It's, is gender equality the same as feminism? Pause a moment. Uh, pause a moment to let the interpreters change over. Sorry, did you say it? it's okay. Uh, so the question I've just asked is: Is is gender equality and feminism the same thing? Well, some quotable celebrities have become pretty vocal on this issue. The actor Emma Watson uh, is a UN Goodwill Ambassador and she has also, she's also a spokesperson for the He For She Project, the UN project where prominent men uh, express their solidarity with women's equality. Emma Watson has given several speeches redefining the women's movement as one for equality between the sexes. She says, if you stand for equality, you're a feminist. Feminism is about giving women choice. It's about freedom. It's about liberation. It's about equality. Her remarks demonstrate, however, the, the, the popular concept that feminism is synonymous with equality. But there is another view. And Watson is challenged by more radical feminists in this. They say that fourth wave feminism is associated with the belief that all humans are equal. It heavily focuses on intersectionality. 
pushing for greater empowerment of traditionally marginalized groups within society, which include women and girls, but are not exclusively concerned with women and girls. Fourth wave feminists advocate for greater representation of all of these groups in politics and in business. And they argue that we would have a more equitable society when we incorporate the perspectives of all citizens. Whereas earlier feminists fought for and earned women greater liberation, individualism, and social mobility, the new wave furthers the agenda by calling for justice against assault and harassment, as I've said, and for equal pay for equal work. Also the freedom to make individual choices about our bodies. This um, view says that the mainstream view represented by Emma Watson and others is uh, concentrates on the idea that we still need to live within a system of patriarchy, which is male rule, and the mistreatment of women and girls is intended to keep us in a subordinate position to men. Feminism, they argue, is not about making women or men comfortable within the current structure of male rule. It argues that gender is a term for a socially constructed stereotype of masculine and feminine, a hierarchy created by men to assign it attributes to people uh, fixed, which are fixed to biology. This was, they argue, a rationale created by men to justify the exploitation of women. So when we define feminism as gender equality, what we're really advocating is equality within the system of gender, equal respect for masculinity and femininity, but not for breathing people, just for people. It's becoming more and more clear after all out nowadays and acceptable to acknowledge that gender is not an absolute, it's rather a spectrum. Many people do not identify as either one end or the other, either masculine or feminine, but as somewhere in between. So we should recognize that it's not, equality is not about gender, it should be about just everybody. Going back to Emma Watson and her declaration that feminism is about freedom, liberation, and equality, are to see that, her, well, her ideas are by no means hers alone. They do just represent, however, the mainstream misunderstanding of what women need to achieve. So, what, when we talk about equality, what are we talking about? It's being defined, uh, generally, as equal pay for equal work, for example. And that this is a cause being advocated by many women in Hollywood. Uh, and, but it's being framed as a feminist issue rather than an economic one. The push for equal pay acknowledges that money is power. But it strangely ignores the reality of the system of capitalism which depends on inequality. Equal pay for equal work does nothing for the women who do a disproportionate amount of housework in heterosexual relationships, for example, no matter how much more money they might make than their male partners. Equal pay within an unequal system is an oxymoron. The reason women are oppressed is because we're different from men. Historically, patriarchy has used difference to justify subordination. We don't need to be seen as equal to men. We need to be seen as worthy and valid, not in spite of, but because of our differences. Women should not have to be perceived as the same as men to be deserving. I'd like to quote Germaine Greer, well-known feminist. She's already in her 80s, I believe. She says, I have never been an equality feminist. I don't think the present condition of men is anything I need to aspire to. So I would suggest to you, ladies and gentlemen, we ought to reject the idea that striving to get what men have will result in our liberation. If we don't challenge the system of patriarchy, any gains that we make as women will depend on men. Our rights will be doled out to us unevenly and we will still be forced to continue asking men to grant us our rights. Say it loudly and proudly, sisters and brothers. Feminism is about women's liberation from patriarchy.
thank you very much. Not necessarily my views, I hope it's going to be <laughs> made clear. <laughs> I didn't say, say that word, I said um, yeah, advocates equality. Well, well, uh, well, I don't think it's a good one. 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 You're right. Is it still? I think it's still.